Is this safe to eat? We sometimes see strange dots on our potatoes and wonder if we should just throw them away. Here are 10 eat or toss facts. Did you know that every year, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted only in the United States? To put it in perspective, this number means nearly 40% of all food in America is wasted. People throw away food if they don't have confidence in the ingredients. They're being cautious and it makes sense, but what if the food is safe to eat and only looks weird? The first item on the list is beef. When it comes to meat, people naturally get extra cautious. Imagine you buy some raw beef in the store. Later on, you realize it's got some brown spots. If you toss it immediately, hear me out. This is normal. In fact, you can see brown layers also inside the beef. Bright red color equals fresh meat, huh? Not necessarily. When the meat is first cut, it's maroon. If the meat is quickly vacuum packaged, it will keep that shade. But if the meat is exposed to air for like 15 minutes, then oxygen will cause a change in the look to red. The redness can turn brown when the biochemical reaction starts. This can take a few hours. Workers at the grocery stores grind the meat several times a day to achieve that bright red color because they know consumers are cautious about maroon looking beef. If the beef is wrapped in an oxygen permeable plastic, it turns bright red after exposure to oxygen. As long as the meat smells and feels fresh, and if it's been stored properly, it should be safe to eat. Have you ever come across dark lines under a shrimp shell? This one has a similar story to beef. Black lines on your shrimp's flesh are related to a natural phenomenon. They gradually occur after shrimps are taken from the water. Meat is exposed to oxygen, and the blackness gets more visible over time. Here also, the pattern of the animal itself can be a factor. These black lines can be a naturally occurring discoloration on the shrimp. Think of cats. They also have different color patterns, but they're the same in terms of species. Next time, you can conduct a mini experiment in your kitchen. Put a couple of shrimps side by side and observe the mild differences in the shrimp's color patterns. Shrimp will have a distinct bad odor when it's no longer edible. So if it smells and tastes fresh, don't toss it. Should you eat moldy yogurt? That green substance on the surface doesn't look appealing at all. But if you scoop it out, you seem to have clean yogurt underneath. The short answer is toss it. The mold could be seen on the top only, but it has probably gone deep. Not to mention that it'll taste bad. Many molds are harmless, but some produce toxic substances. Green mold is a type of penicillium. Does this word sound familiar? That's the same type of mold used in the antibiotic penicillin. Don't get too excited. Eating moldy yogurt won't magically cure bacterial infections. It only spoils your dairy product. In 2013, there was an outbreak related to one line of yogurts. The company handed the products to stores as usual. After some time, they received customer complaints. They said that the yogurt looked like yogurt soup and tasted really old. Turns out that a type of fungus probably released some carbon dioxide. It made the product fizzy and bloating. Blech. The company and another independent scientist both said that this fungus in question wasn't usually harmful to people. Yet, more than 200 people reported becoming affected by it. So, these sorts of things can still happen. You should trust your spidey sense. If you've ever been lucky enough to see some mold in a freshly opened package, reach out to the manufacturer. You'll potentially save others from facing the same scenery by notifying the company about a systemic issue and preventing potential future product waste. Plus, the company probably wants to make amends and either reimburse your sad yogurt with a happy one, or better, they'll give you coupons for free products. Why do avocados sometimes have brown dots inside? Technically, it's edible, but you might not want to eat it. Avocados are a source of many vitamins like C, E, K, and B6, as well as healthy stuff like magnesium, potassium, and more. The avocado works hard to become such a health storage. Nutrients, water, and sugars wander around this fruit. Yes, technically, avocado is classified as a fruit. Anyway, avocados have their own transport channels like veins. These channels are normally invisible to us. 
Until something goes out of the ordinary, the avocado may be stored in too cold temperatures for a longer time than it should. As a result, the tissue cells might be weakened and start to deteriorate. Experts say that after the fruit is harvested, if it stays in the refrigerator for a few weeks before you buy it, vascular browning can occur. This phenomenon becomes visible after you keep the avocado at room temperature for a few days. Don't be hard on yourself, it's not because of you. So should you eat it or toss it? You can eat the brown dotted avocados, but you may want to taste them first. They might not taste good compared to a regular one. What about the white area under the potato peel? Eat or toss? This area is also like dark bruise marks, but it's not black. If the outer layer of the potato looks normal, that odd looking white knot is not mold. The moldy potatoes deteriorate. They'll get softer, wrinkled, or squishy. As long as the exterior of this potato appears clean and regular, there's probably no harmful microbial growth inside of it. These strikingly white areas can be shaped due to potatoes being bruised, possibly in the field during the harvesting period. To sum up, you can eat it. There's also an issue of white smears coming out when we slice potatoes. You see the marks on the cutting board? Experts say that some potatoes have a higher level of water and starch content. As a result, your cutting board gets a bit messier than usual. No need to worry about it. I'm going to carry on with another form of potato. Not because I love every version of potato and I can eat it in all meals from breakfast to dinner, but because I want to know. What are those brown spots on potato chips? Should we eat or toss them? Consider these as minor imperfections. They don't affect the safety of the chip. They're there again because of the bruises they get or as a result of frying. Sometimes you see that your garlic is trying to make more garlic out of itself. Yep, it has sprouted. The question is, is it okay to eat sprouted cloves or should you toss them? If the green sprout is in the center of the garlic clove, that's fine. Be aware that the taste of the garlic will be stronger than it usually is. It will still be perfectly okay in a cooked meal since it'll be alongside other ingredients. The taste shouldn't be that harsh. Can we eat an apple with worms? Most people can't even stand the idea of accidentally eating an apple with a worm, but that's a cultural thing. So the answer is yes, we can eat it. After all, worms add a little protein to the fruit. These animals don't carry any harmful parasites. They make their way into the apple. The entrance point of the fruit might have an off flavor since it got sort of rotten in time. Besides the taste, the rotten part is all safe to bite. What might not be so safe is eating the fallen apples though. Those have probably been hanging out on the ground for quite some time. This period might be enough for the harmful bacteria from the soil to sneak into the apple. There were some cases where people experienced health issues by drinking unpasteurized apple juice made from dropped apples. Yeah, the ones that interact with unhealthy bacteria. From the iconic golden fries to a broken ice cream machine, here are 10 fast food secrets that the fast food industry doesn't really want you to know. Ah, chicken nuggets. Those golden crispy bites you can get from fast food chains. They're even on the menu of school lunches. What if I tell you that they aren't actually made entirely out of chicken? Researchers took chicken nugget samples from unnamed fast food chains and analyzed them. They said that one sample, for instance, contained only 40% and another 50% of meat. The rest? Well, you're eating mouthfuls of things like fat, connective tissue, and bone spicules. Many fast food companies grind the meat with that stuff. They make mechanically formed orbs of chicken parts. Why? Perhaps it's because this method is cheaper and more profitable. Millions of restaurants worldwide have chicken nuggets on their menu. So scientifically, it's not fair to say all nuggets are made this way, but a lot of studies imply so. The more the meat is processed, the more you lose the good stuff, like vitamin B6 and B12. The bitter truth is that companies add stuff, such as sodium, to the mixed paste. Sodium is added to get a better flavor. It's one of the ingredients that makes nuggets so yummy. Our bodies need sodium, but not too much of it. Unfortunately, most junk food contains more than our bodies can handle. So it might be a safe option to avoid eating these sorts of foods frequently. Chains dip their nuggets into tempura batter and fry them in hydrogenated oil. 
That's also not a green light regarding health, but this is how they catch the golden tint. They put additional stuff in nuggets. What about grilled chicken? In recent years, we've seen brands highlighting grilled chicken as a healthier option. Research has been done about grilled chicken too. And the same approach is applied here. Take chicken samples from iconic fast food companies and send those to labs for analysis. The results show that companies are misleading people by advertising these products by labeling them as healthy, natural, and 100% chicken breast. In reality, a couple of things are added to the meat to make it tender and juicy. Plus, these additives make it easier to cook the meat, freeze, and transport it, and reheat it later without losing too much moisture. The drawback of all these additives is that they affect the nutritional value of the chicken breast. These ingredients aren't the healthiest for us. We should especially watch out for three things. The first one is again, sodium. Fast food samples had seven to 10 times more sodium than home cooked chicken breast. Imagine you have a cheeseburger, but you say no to yourself and try to pick a less harmful menu item. Yet, some chicken sandwiches have the same amount or even more sodium than a cheeseburger with medium fries. The second thing you need to watch out for is phosphate additives. These additives allow the protein to conjoin more water. This means the white meat in the sandwich will appear juicier to you. Any word you see in the ingredients section that contains FOS is a phosphate additive, so it's best to avoid them. The last thing you should avoid is sugars and starches, not just in grilled chicken, but pretty much in all fast food products. Oh, that's hard to digest, I admit. Cornstarch, sugar, malt, they come with grilled chicken breast buns, and even some fries have sugar too. Everywhere I look, it's sugar. You see, home-cooked chicken has zero grams of carbs, but the study samples had added sugar and up to 10% of the calories in the chicken breast comes from there. So what's the moral of this story? If you're a health-conscious diner, you should maybe go for other options. There are secret recipes from companies like KFC and Coca-Cola. No company wants to share the ingredients that make their food irresistible, but with a little research, you can decipher many things. You want to know the secret of McDonald's fries? It's written on their website. They add beef flavoring to the frying oil. This may sound weird, but apparently, that's a known practice amongst chefs and restaurants. Duck fat has also been used as a flavor, for example, in high-end restaurants. I'm a fries lover, so I added another fact about fries. Sadly, they're even saltier than you think. Experts suggest that a grown-up should consume at most 2,300 milligrams of sodium daily. Guess the McD's large fry sodium number. At least 400 milligrams. Classic fries from Burger King have 732 milligrams. And Five Guys take the level even higher with 962 milligrams of sodium. Next time, maybe you can ask workers to go easy on the salt as a solution. Picture this, you're in a hurry, but your tummy says, feed me or I'll affect your mood and make life miserable for you. For a quick snack, you enter a fast food chain restaurant. You order your favorite burger. It looks and smells as if it's just been taken from the grill and served. Nope, they have different types of grills designed for this that can cook meat super quickly. Sorry to bear the bad news, but those perfect grill marks on your burger aren't real tools. The factory adds them. If you want to know how clean an eatery is, look under the ice chute of the soda machine in places where you can get your own drink. There you go, inspector. You solved the case. Various studies say that if such machines aren't cleaned correctly, dirty, contaminated ice can lead to some health problems. There could be mold or bacteria there. Ew! The process of cleaning ice machines isn't easy. The same thing applies to ice cream machines too. Rumor has it that those ice cream machines aren't out of order. Employers just cannot find time to clean them properly. Now, what's the best time to get a good and fresh meal? Here are two opinions, and they both have solid reasonings. The first team recommends avoiding ordering grilled food in chains from 7 to after midnight. Many former employees say that sometimes they had taquitos or hot dogs prepared at around 4 or 5 a.m., but kept waiting to serve them till around midnight. That's not healthy. The other team says you should order between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. or between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. to get the freshest meal. 
Since it's going to be around lunch and dinner time, there'll be circulation and you can get decent food. Fast food companies have marketing, design, and psychological tricks to lure you in and make you order. Yet, they don't want you to stay inside for too long. If you were dining in mood lighting, you know under dim lamps and candlelight, you would take your time to eat. As the name suggests, you should be fast like your food in chain restaurants. They have fluorescence and they're in full light. Similarly, the floors and tables have reflective surfaces that make food look nice and bright. Plus, music is usually fast and loud. It's done to prevent you from spending hours there. Yet, they want you to take advantage of the first 20 minutes after your purchase. The faster you eat, the longer it will take you to feel full. Scientists say it takes about 20 minutes for our stomachs to inform our brain, okay, now I'm full. It's a good idea to eat in a clean area, but most of these companies are using cleaning products that have super strong chemicals. Assume that the staff clean the place at the end of their shift. They wipe down the soda machine and grill surface, and then you showed up early the next day. You may get some of that chemical residue on your food compared to other customers visiting the place later in the day. The vegan patty may not be 100% vegan. I'm talking about the grill, not the meat itself. In most of the chains, vegan burgers are cooked on the same grill as meat burgers. Do you have fast food chain secrets you want to share? Tell them to fellow Brightsiders in the comments. There's a dangerous dish that can poison you when prepared incorrectly. Everyday food like honey and cashew can be harmful too in certain conditions. You should know these facts before you eat some products. Have you ever chewed the seeds when eating an apple? Then you know that unpleasant taste the seeds have. That's because of cyanide. Don't be alarmed yet the seeds have a protective cloak covering them. That's why cyanide doesn't enter your system if you accidentally swallow the seeds. Better be cautious though, even small doses of cyanide can result in rapid breathing and more extreme and unpleasant results. Another danger lurking in your kitchen is potatoes, the ones with sprouts and green spots. Cutting off the green parts or sprouts solves the problem only visibly. The toxic substance called glycoalkaloid may have already spread through the whole potato. This substance turns some parts of a potato green for some reason. It's a sign for you. Eating this kind of potato can cause nausea, headaches, and other consequences. Are you a bubble tea fan? Then maybe you're familiar with cassava, aka tapioca. This is a root veggie, and it's cultivated in South America. It's also often used to make cakes and chips. It can be either sweet or bitter. It's common for root and tuber varieties of cassava to contain toxins. Tapioca must be prepared properly before you consume it. If it's served incorrectly or eaten raw, the consequences are pretty serious. But when it's processed correctly, it's delicious and safe to eat. Elderberries are known as a supplement to boost your immune system and help your body fight a cold or the flu. This medicinal plant needs to be handled and prepared with care too. If you eat unripe berries, they can do more harm than good. Here comes lectin and cyanide. These chemicals can cause stomach problems, for instance. This one makes me sad more than any other thing on the list. And this list includes a lot of healthy products. Anyway, here I spell it out popcorn. There are many studies saying that microwave popcorn is harmful for you. First, you consume the chemicals used in packaging. There are also flavoring additives that aren't healthy. Now remember that moment when you open the bag and hot popcorn smelling air goes up into your nose? It can lead to irreversible lung damage. For instance, there's a diagnosis named popcorn lung. A chemical used to provide microwave popcorn with its buttery flavor is related to that diagnosis. What can you do? Choose other packaging options or invest in an air popper. Air popped popcorn has only 90 calories and less than one gram of fat. Yay! Number six is honey. Honey is a sweet liquid made by, I'm joking, but do you know that natural honey is dangerous to eat if the amount is more than a teaspoon? It has a toxin with a hard to pronounce name. To get rid of this toxin, honey has to go through a pasteurization process. Let's move on to cherry pits. If you don't chew or crunch them, you'll probably be fine. Yet, 
keep in mind that these pits contain prusic acid, and this stuff is poisonous. What about ackee fruit? It's the national fruit of Jamaica, and it turns out unripe ackee contains a poison called hypoglycin. Ackee fruit must be fully ripe if you want to eat it. In other words, this fruit should open up by itself. Once it's ready to be picked up, it'll split wide open. No to the highly toxic pink flesh or black seeds, and yes to the delicious creamy pulp near the seeds. Eating this fruit incorrectly can cause Jamaican stomach sickness. Fugu is the Japanese word for puffer fish and the dish prepared from it. What's interesting about this dish is that it can be the last dish in your life if you don't prepare it properly. This fish contains a very powerful toxin that's very dangerous to humans. A single fish has enough poison to harm 30 people. Because of this, Japanese chefs undergo years of training to get a special license. Despite all precautions and preparations, fugu still sometimes becomes the last meal for some people. Would you take that risk? Perfect ciders, cashews. They can also be very risky to eat when they're raw. You probably get cashews from stores with raw cashew labels, but they aren't 100% raw. Before they find their spots on the shelves, they're processed with steam to remove a toxin called erushiol. Cashew shells contain this toxin. What would happen to you if you ate these nuts raw? A dangerous allergic reaction if you have a tendency to allergies. This depends on your sensitivity to poison ivy. Speaking of raw food, raw kidney beans are risky too. They contain a toxin called lectin. This one can give you stomach aches and other digestion-related issues as a bonus. All you need is to swallow four to five raw beans to experience these side effects. Red beans are rich in plant-based protein, essential vitamins, and minerals. Cook them correctly to enjoy these goodies. For this, keep dried red beans on the stove for at least 10 minutes. Boiling them for a shorter time and at a lower temperature can actually increase their toxicity. Beans can become even more toxic than if they are consumed raw. So yeah, a minimum of 10 minutes at high temperatures. Eating too many untreated bitter almonds can cause many unpleasant symptoms and health issues. Rhubarb leaves are a bit tricky too. You can eat the stalk, but don't munch on the leaves. The leaves contain oxalic acid, which ties to calcium. This makes it harder for the body to absorb the needed amounts of calcium. Mushrooms. For plenty of people, pizza and pasta wouldn't be so great without mushrooms. We all know that mushrooms are kind of unpredictable, especially if they grow in the wild. Here are two of the most dangerous ones, the death cap and the destroying angel. Star fruit is a risky choice for people with sensitive kidneys. If you're one of them, you might want to keep this fruit out of your meals. Regularly functioning kidneys can filter out the toxins star fruit contains. Otherwise, the toxin will hang around and cause some problems there. The next product on the list is nutmeg. If you find that nutty flavor super nice like me, hear me out before adding it everywhere. Small amounts of nutmeg are fine and healthy, but if you, let's say, eat spoonfuls of nutmeg, it can cause problems. Even with two teaspoons, knock knock, you get poisoned. Canned tuna can be a lifesaver. It's not pricey, it's a good source of protein, and with its help, you can prepare a delicious meal quickly. No cooking, just lettuce, bread, and a few more ingredients. There you go. How about three to five times a week? And you might experience a side effect called mercury poisoning. Now, this is related to how much and what type of food you consume. Canned tuna contains mercury, and that's why eating too much of it can lead to mercury poisoning. Medical advisors say that every kind of fish has some level of mercury. But that level differs from one species to another. For example, canned tuna has relatively high levels of mercury. Obviously, seafood is a great source of omega-3 and other things that are essential to our brain and good health. To stay safe, experts advise people to choose low-mercury seafood. Here's an interesting fact related to this. To get the most omega-3 fats from your canned tuna, choose water-packed fish instead of oil-packed. In oil-packed cans, the oil mixes with some of the tuna's natural fat. You open the can and drain the oil, and some of the fish's omega-3 fatty acids also get drained. 
but water and oil don't mix. Water pack tuna won't lose its omega-3 fats. You can add some oil and dressing after you open the can.